And we are seeing the impacts of atmospheric rivers in real time. And in a changing climate, the frequency and intensity of storms is proving both costly and deadly. A recent Stanford study is showing the economic damages from back to back atmospheric rivers is four times higher than predicted from individual storms. Meteorologist VNA Arana spoke with researchers at the university and is here with more insight. Uh, VNA, let's go ahead and start with the basics here because a lot of people have been talking to me like, oh, you know, atmospheric rivers, isn't that just rain? Like, can you give us the <laughs> basics on atmospheric rivers? There is uh, something special behind the atmospheric river. Now, likely by this point, you might have heard the term Pineapple Express, mm -hmm. and that's because of its moisture tap to Hawaii, but the term atmospheric river itself was first coined in 1994 by NOAA. Now the NOAA definition is a long narrow transport of water that can vary in size and strength. On average they are around 250 to 375 miles wide. The average atmospheric river carries water vapor equivalent to the average flow of the water at the mouth of the Mississippi River. And a really strong one can transport up to 15 times that amount. So that is the difference between that and a regular storm. Now in a way which they can release that water vapor can come in the form of rain or snow and in 2023 the series of storms caused over three billion dollars in losses and 21 deaths now Stanford University looked at nine atmospheric rivers that hit California between December 26 2023 and January 17 2023 their research shows that because of climate change the frequency with no real breaks in between which is what we've seen is becoming more common but they also looked at insurance claims to find out the cause and I did ask one of the surprising aspects of the study for them and here's what one of the researchers had to say I think we were surprised by the magnitude of the impact of, of having a sequence. So I think lots of us understand uh, intuitively when we live through these storms that when the ground is already wet and the rivers are running high, another storm would be, you know, more challenging. You know, we were expecting maybe, a, you know, 20% or 50% increase in losses in the uh, storm following in a sequence. But to see the magnitude of three or four times more um, losses from a storm in a sequence versus a storm by itself, that that magnitude, I think, surprised us even coming in with an interest in this topic. Just to give you an idea, in L.A., they received one month's worth of rainfall in just 12 hours. So wow. that's how much moisture these atmospheric rivers can carry. Now, they provide about half of California's annual precipitation and typically bring a boost to the Sierra snowpack, also our reservoirs. They are rated on a scale of one to five based on their length and how much water they carry. Now, as the ground becomes more saturated, of course, he mentioned that it creates higher flood risk potential, which is what we have seen play out time and time again. Now, I did ask him what were they hoping to do with this information, and they said ideally by doing the continuous research of how atmospheric studies impact us and things like that, um, they can help improve public communication mm -hmm. about the potential hazards and influences of atmospheric rivers, and that'll be something that they will continue to study as far as long-term trends now that we're seeing a changing climate and of course we've got the boost of El Nino as mm -hmm. well. Well now we know. All right. Appreciate all of that information VNA.